All right, so now we're going to talk about the CRT experiment that was performed by J.J. Thompson in the late 1800s. And CRT stands for cathode ray tube. And although there have been many CRT experiments, even before J.J. Thompson started working with CRTs, this particular CRT experiment was the most important CRT experiment of all because this experiment marked the discovery of the electron. So prior to this experiment, scientists were still convinced that the atom was the smallest fundamental particle and that there are no subatomic particles that make up an atom. This experiment basically disproved that. So let's just first start by looking up what a cathode ray tube looks like and some of its components. So here we have a basic schematic of a cathode ray tube. And a cathode ray tube consists of a hollow glass tube. So imagine that this big long thing is my hollow glass tube. And within that tube we have a negative electrode and a positive electrode. The negative electrode is called the cathode. And the positive electrode is called the anode. One more thing that's pretty important. Uh, this glass tube is actually uh, partially evacuated, meaning some of the air that was in the tube has been vacuumed out of it. So that's one of the things that you need to do in order to make a cathode ray tube. So in addition to that, if we connect our negative and positive electrodes, that is our cathode and our anode, to our negative and positive leads of a high voltage power source, then we'll get a cathode ray tube. and we'll end up getting a cathode ray within the tube that looks like this. It's basically a straight beam. And if we put a fluorescent material at the end of the tube that emits light whenever the cathode ray hits it, then we can actually sort of see the cathode ray and acknowledge that it is indeed there. So in studying cathode rays, J.J. Thompson was able to make a couple of conclusions about the properties of the cathode rays. And the properties are as follows. First of all, he concluded that the cathode rays are actually streams of particles. Secondly, he concluded that these particles travel in straight lines. In addition, he concluded that the cathode rays are independent of cathode composition. So that means it doesn't matter what my cathode is made of, it can be made of anything, the cathode rays are still going to be the same thing and they're going to have the same properties. And lastly he concluded that the cathode rays carry a negative electrical charge. So with these things in mind, J.J. Thompson constructed an apparatus that enabled him to discover the electron. So the apparatus that he used is sort of a, uh, it's a slight variation of the cathode ray tube that is shown here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this cathode ray tube up and I'm just going to sort of transform it into the apparatus that J.J. Thompson used. So let's do that. So in the apparatus that J.J. Thompson used, his anode was actually pretty close to the cathode. So this is my anode. And the end of the cathode ray tube, it was not cylindrical, it was it kind of had a fat end to it, so I'm going to draw that. So this is more or less what J.J. Thompson's cathode ray tube looked like. And ordinarily, the cathode ray travels in a straight line all the way to the end of the tube and it originates in the cathode. So what J.J. Thompson did however was he sort of tweaked the cathode rays by applying electric and magnetic fields. And the, the, the way he did this was he placed a positive and a negative, a positively charged plate and a negatively charged plate on either side of the tube. And addition, in, in addition to doing that, he also applied a magnetic field 
by placing a magnet around the tube. So let's say we have the north pole of the magnet right here and the south pole of the magnet over here. So imagine that the north pole of the magnet is in front of the tube and the south pole of the magnet is behind the tube. That's why I drew it with these dotted lines here. So by tweaking these electric and magnetic fields around, J.J. Thompson was able to deflect the cathode ray beam. So it looked sort of like this whenever he started applying the electric and magnetic fields. And the more electric, the stronger the electric and magnetic fields, the more the cathode ray deflected. So by measuring or by observing the extent to which the cathode ray was deflected in response to the strength of the electric and magnetic fields that he applied, he was able to calculate what we call a charge to mass ratio. So Q over M. And the value of this charge to mass ratio that J.J. Thompson calculated was negative 1.76 times 10 to the 8 coulombs per gram. And this particular value that he arrived at implied that the particles that made up the cathode rays were about 2,000 times lighter than hydrogen, which is the lightest known atom. The conclusion? We have an electron. We have a subatomic particle. The atom that was you know, once thought to be indestructible can now be chipped. So the results were pretty remarkable. And that was one of the fundamental experiments that led to the atomic structure as we know it today, including the subatomic particles.